going on, everybody? Another day in paradise. I've been down at the ocean watching the, uh, I don't know, seven foot waves, maybe six foot. Greg, I haven't avoided you, man. I'm still waiting on uh, Trading View. He sent me another email. They're supposed to get me the link on it like ASAP. I told him, I was like, dude, I got like three or four people that want to sign up for this thing. So uh, no audio. Can you hear me now, James? Okay, good. I was gonna say, it looked like it was good on my end. I, I always test it right before I turn it on too. Good, good, good. Tom, good to see you, Bill. Mark. Let's see. What do you all want to, um, we're gonna start this now. If there's any late bloomers, there's late bloomers. Um, here's the standard disclosure. Trading is risky. Not all trades will make money. Read this, screenshot it, pause it on the video later on. You can read it. And let's get down to business. Um, let's go over here. Now, you guys are going to see a bunch of, uh, you're going to hear a bunch of beeps. Gary, good to see you, man. Um, you're going to hear a bunch of beeps going on. I'm testing some stuff uh, with alerts, and I have like a crap ton of them. So. <laughs> There, I have not figured out how to silence them. Um, let me see here. I don't set alert. I don't know. I guess maybe I could make turn. I don't know. I don't want to mess with them because I have them running right, but I have a lot of alerts going on right now. Um, Gary, it is. Just something I found on TradingView that's free that's in there that, um, like, for instance, let me turn off uh, our indicators here. And do, 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 do. So while the market is doing its thing here, like it's going sideways, but we're trending down. And if you look, the uh, let me bring this up a little bit. If you look, the volume is pretty much down. You get a little bit of green in there, but that's during these jumps up and then back down. They're just solid red. Uh, there was a little green right there, but just sideways. And then boom, uh, took off right here going up. But then you can see that the positive was, and that was the big wave up. And then we leveled off again and it just kind of went sideways. So I don't know. It uh, I just found it underneath the app store on there that's free. Um, just added it on. That uh, and I literally Gary just put this on my chart like yesterday. <laughs> so uh, I only got to use it a little bit today um, on it. So let's yes, let's take this off. All right, let's uh, jump on. Let's jump on ES and just do some charting. We're gonna go through, let's see, make sure anything else. All right, so you know my normal normal deal. First thing you do, jump on your chart, drop a channel on there. We're gonna do it right now. Click your left button there, click regression channel. You can watch some of my videos underneath JDub Tick Trader to, uh, figure out how to set these as defaults, but I have this one. Uh, I use the white channel for a daily just because I did it on the first video and I've kept it that way ever since for the last few months. Um, so we're still on an uptrend. And finally, after 29 or 30 some days of never closing above, we closed above, finally. Um, now that doesn't mean anything, that, uh, but who knows, we may go Set a new high that uh, even higher as Bob and other people say, overbought can become more overbought. <laughs> uh, so, all right, so we do a daily and then 240 is not going to change too much, guys. Like if I go backwards in here and 
let that white channel click on there. 240 is not going to be much different um, than it. And I'm going to take off that red channel. Um, so we'll go down to an hour. And we'll look here. I like this channel from this point right here. And the reason why I like that one compared to this one or this one down here is this is the low point of this whole move. And this was the low point of this move. You could, al you could almost take this one right here. Let's do a red channel, which I know it says 15 minutes, but we're on a one. Let's draw one from here to here. All right. Check that out. I like to see how close they are. If we bounced uh, top and bottoms, uh, like if they've been pretty darn close, which they're all right. Now let's do another one, and I'm just going to do this one in yellow. And let's do it from this bar to this bar and see what it changes. Almost, it's exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which one of these um, that we drop it on, it's exactly the same. Now you're going to get a little bit different picture if you go over here and take, say, this low point to this point. Now, that gives you a different perspective on this. Uh, let's zoom in and you click this little reset chart button. Zoom in. Now look at this. We've come up and now this gives you an entire different perspective of what's going on. Like before, if we go over here and hide these channels, okay? If you have this on your chart, you have no freaking idea what's going on. You know what I mean? Um, and even if we go to a daily that you're in there, okay, we're above the center channel line on the daily. All right, great. Now, drop down, back down to that one hour. And, oh, I hit them. Drop down to that one hour, you know, we're just above it, but let's turn them on. And now all of a sudden, we can make a better decision in there. Let me zoom in a little more, close this out here. Now we can see not only are we above the, this white line is the center channel line on a daily. We know the current trend for the one hour from the 19th until now, the 26th, so basically a week, a little over a week, we've been in a nice steady uptrend. And we've respected this channel completely other than one little dip out right there. We've gone up. But we can also look at since July 24th, so pretty much a whole month, which is about five weeks of uh, trading, we've pretty much stayed inside that channel. Couple little dips down, uh, not really, only one getting out of there, um, out of the top. That, uh, But what this gives us right now is a pretty good perspective of, we're probably gonna get some heavy ass resistance right here because it's two channels. It's the longer month long channel and then a week channel. We're at the very, I mean, look at the, where we stopped, that where the two intersect together. So I'm not saying that you're gonna automatically look for shorts, but this is, uh, we're gonna get some heavy resistance um, pushing on here. Probably some, if you look here, if we get some sideways, it'd still be going up, but bouncing off here and in between there. Uh, I mean, there could, the thing is, uh, Trevor, I have no conclusions. And that, I think, um, I think traders have the hardest time because they come in with a pre, hey Kathy, they come in with a preconceived notion of what's going to happen today. It's going today up, it's going down, it's doing whatever. The, you gotta be honest with yourself, you don't know what the hell it's gonna do. You have no control over what it's gonna do. You know what I mean? Unless you're some godzillionaire that's trading, you know, 100,000 contracts that you're not going to move the needle anywhere on this screen anywhere. So you just need to, when you get in front of the screen, 
you need to see where you're at and what you like for instance now i don't trade evenings because there's not enough volume um yeah oh, we got a little bit right there uh well no 17. nope nothing look down here zero this is daytime nothing on evening this was nothing like in the evenings and then look at all the volume why risk money during this time here i it's just not worth my time plus I trade during the day and I do webinars and I do all kinds of stuff and I would be on, <laughs> be on the, I'm already on the internet 14 hours a day, 15 hours a day anyways. So basically, I don't know what it's going to do, but I know we're going to have some heavy ass resistance on this yellow line. Uh, and then I know there's no way in hell that I think we're going to get to 3619. You know what I mean? It's like, there's not too much going on in the world. Um, there's not enough positive stuff to push us this high. So if we are right in this same yellow channel, we're probably gonna get a dip back down here and play around on the center channel line. Now, it is good news we bounced above it, but then again, we bounced above it right before the market crashed too. On from 2008, and you guys that have been here before on these Wednesday webinars, we drew a channel from 2008 to current. And right before the market crashed, we went outside that channel and then came back. So who knows, maybe this will be that way. We don't know. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going, let me turn off that volume. I'm gonna go down to a 15 minute chart and we're gonna look for opportunities inside of that channel. The bigger channel, um, the yellow one, we know that's on the higher time frame, So we can look in here. All right, having both on here, if you were trading, let me zoom in a little bit more right here. Let me make, give me just a second here. What did I just do? Somehow, actually here, let me use the, if you guys ever screw anything up, this backup button right here, All right, there we go. Somehow or another, I combined an indicator and that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. I was trying to lower this down so we have some more screen space in here where you can see what's going on because I do not need that much space for bias and So knowing the longer term of what's going on here, we're gonna look for opportunities within those channels that's on there. Now I'm on a 15 minute chart. If you're watching the market and we're going along, this should be this morning, yep, 8.30. We were at the bottom of this channel, the current channel line. Well, reading your Lorento DeMere Price Action Breakdown book, you would know to look for a long down here because we're down here. Uh, RSI cranked around there going up. You've got a green bias dot. I mean, without adding anything other of our indicators in there and then uh, your stochastic crossed over going up. Now let's add on bits and look for an opportunity here. Bits actually pick this move up over here at one o'clock yesterday on a 15 minute chart. Came up, tagged that center channel line, and then we just rode that bottom channel line uh, of the bigger time frame. Look at that, how, how much it respected that bigger time frame, but kept us in the same trend. We came down then and tested the bottom of that current channel. It went up and then we've tested the top. So it has proven to us for many, many, many weeks that I'm not saying that it, there's no guarantee it could go above this, but more than likely it's not gonna go above this and it's probably gonna get some resistance here um, and probably get some resi resistance around that red line or the yellow line. Now let's go down to five minutes because you can't always find, you can find more precise entries on the five minutes. And this morning, I posted a trade on this. We, 
it just barely crossed back over. The candles came down and then crossed back over right here on that candle. And that's the one that was at the bottom of that channel. If I go backwards, I should be able to get that channel on. And there it is. Right there on that channel line. So by going down from, if when you're on that 15 minute, Uh, Trevor, I mean, that it's a positive thing because when you're at the bottom of each one, it's like uh, grading a trade bias, you know, this, that, and other. You've got two channel bottoms going up, and it's been correct for two months, and one's been correct for six weeks. So, you know what I mean? What are the, the chances are on your side of being positive? But by going down to that um, five minute chart, you get the exact candle, or I wouldn't say the exact candle, but a more precise entry. And this is your five minute candle right here. All right, so if you took this candle right here, that it opened at 42.25 and it went down to 41. So you went down five ticks uh, negative is all it went on you if you just automatically took that one. Now. Obviously, you're going to wait till it touches and comes back, but let's just say worst case scenario, you took that one. If you're going to grade this trade of it crossing over on, look, it, isn't it nice when the market actually moves instead of going sideways like this and actually goes straight up that it's so big, you got to move your screen around. Um, when it did go up and it crossed over, you got your actual uh, bits indicator right here. Now, this one, I believe this morning, I took this off this channel line. Um, but taking this trade right here, where it crossed over, if we look down below on RSI, it had been kind of just sideways, 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 still sideways, but moving up. It took out um, the previous high. It went above it, came back down below. But at that time on that candle, don't put a lot of weight on that RSI part, but that's where it was at. You've got your first, let me hover my mouse where it stays right there. All right. So where you can see down below is we have our first green dot uh, from the going down and touching that bottom channel line for a signal of going long. So up top cyan, which is right here. Let me zoom in a little closer. Cyan crossed over in this area right here. You could take it either way. But cyan crossed over the yellow, one reason to go long. We're above these purple pointed control dots. That is two reasons to go long. Your RSI is pointing up. It's not pointing down, it's pointing up. And it the candle before it pivoted and the two candles before that it pivoted. So we have a higher low and a higher high. Um, three reasons to go long. Your green bias dot uh, on the higher time frames are in confluence for a long. There's three reasons to go long. Your stochastics, if you look, barely got anything on that dip. We barely turned red. I mean, didn't even put any uh, like volume into that and came back around. So there's three reasons to go long. If you had a big old, uh, if, imagine if it went the other way. Uh, oh. Do wrong one. There we go. If it if this red dip was like this big green where we went long today, then you'd want to be concerned. But when it's a real tiny little dip like this, you know what I mean? It's going uh, the other direction on it. So let's go back here and hover over that. There's four reasons go long, and then down here on your stochastics, your blue line crossed over your red. A couple can two candles before it actually if you look where it crossed it crossed where it touched that bottom channel line there's five reasons to go long and then your uh stochastics arrow uh kicked in on should be the same yep same bar six reasons to go long all right so right now just using bits just using a channel you have five reasons to take this trade to go long and absolutely zero reasons not to take it all right, now let's turn on Elliott Wave. And not necessarily for the actual Elliott Wave at first, which this is what I posted earlier uh, was that we had, 
is I wanted the 6-4 moving average, just blue and red lines right here. You usually do not want to take a trade until we are above the 6-4 moving average line. Now, right here, personally, I'll take this down here. Bits alerted us right here, which got us in a little earlier. Okay, that's at, I would say me down here, I'd be at the uh, 3441.75. Bits got you in around 3445.75, so three points uh, higher, 12 takes. And then confirmation above your 6.4 moving average, we went up uh, and it's right here. So we open here, if you took that somewhere in there. So there's six reasons to go long. We're above it and going. Now you could have taken it in a couple candles later, but it is what it is. Um, and then we ended up, this was a third wave, fourth wave, and then a fifth wave target was right here. That turned into a longer third wave, fourth wave pullback. Uh, if you watch my video earlier, I posted this. It was already painting a new green one on this, and it ended up hitting it. I, I left the house after that. Uh, and lo and behold, look where the fifth wave target was, the top of the channel line. I mean, is that any coincidence? Like, if you're writing this out and you're like, man, I wonder how much higher it's going to go. Um, and you, anybody that's been on these webinars, you know, I personally, myself, I have a fifth wave target. It runs into the target. I run my stop loss. My rule is I run it to the line. So this would have went up, touched the channel line. Now I would have ran it up to the channel line because typically when it hits the channel line, it pulls back. And what did it do? It pulled back and we've been flat since on there. But let's go back to the entry on this. So here's your, we're above the 6.4. We have six reasons to go long at this point. Now let's kick on roller coaster. And roller coaster had two uh, alerts down here to go if for a breakout going down that it was meeting the power was building up to go short, which it never activated. That's how you're down there. Uh, Ryan, I sh uh, shoot uh, videos on TradingView, and then I just post them on my uh, at SnellW, and I'll put it in here in the chat box. Uh, at SnellW on Twitter. And full disclosure, I'm very political, so I'm very uh, civil and polite to everybody on both sides of the aisle. I always say I'm a, a centrist, uh, right leaning. <laughs> that, uh, but uh, but no, I as I say, I'm fair to everybody. I uh, I had a call today from somebody that is on the opposite side of the aisle as I am politically, and we had a nice conversation and just BS about life and the whole nine yards. That uh, I love everybody, just so everybody knows. Uh, anybody that knows me knows I'll give the shirt off my back to help anyone. Uh, so, all right. So, on a five minute, we're going to look through here for there wasn't a lot of roller coaster moves, guys, that uh, looking in the groove. Now, we had a nice one over here. I mean, what is that? Uh, one o'clock in the afternoon on yesterday. Is that right? Yeah, yesterday. Uh, super nice move right there on five minutes. Now, I believe 15 minutes had where are we at here? I thought we had it this morning. I thought I had a really good move. Oh no, 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 it was gold. Gold, gold, gold. We'll pull up gold here in a second. I was like, man, I know I had a nice roller coaster move. Here's one uh yesterday at the open. As soon as it opened, I mean roller coaster took roller coaster had you in this trade yesterday right at the, I mean, right before the open set, 8.15, it crossed over and cyan, let's look up here. Let me shut this off. Now, I think if I recall right, let me isolate this. All right, so we have 8.30s rolling around. You wanna to go to the high of the, low, of the overnight session. So it's gonna be really about right there, but I'm thinking this is one and this is two. So I'm going to go over here and isolate off this candle right here that popped out of the channel. And that is, if you look right here on the candle count, that is 
21024. So we'll click on here, 21024. And had, let me turn off roller coaster. Yeah, we had a smaller, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, we're on a 15 minute here. Hold on, let's go to, let's go back in that channel. Come on, there we go. That race down, and that was right in there. So we're gonna go back, the high on there is 20,772 is the candle number. We'll go here, 20,772. There we go. I know to say I knew I saw something on there. Let me turn off bits for a second. And you can see. It actually violated it that uh, even though it did respect it and end up coming down. And this is one of the things of using a channel. It get, it gives you a good idea of like what direction the market is going in and where we're going to get resistance. Uh, now, it didn't have any resistance to this middle. Once it pierced through, man, it just took off, raced like a rocket. So if we put bits back on, grading this trade, you had nothing but chop right here. Chop, 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 chop. And then boom. Once we came out of there, now it gave you a signal there. It went short, popped back up went short, popped back up, and this time here. I wouldn't take anything until you're below all of the, uh, really almost below this candle too, the low of that candle. If you wanted to take it um, right there, just look at the wick, just go left, and whatever the lowest wick is right there. Uh, I would take the recent ones all the way across. So somewhere right there is where that would be a safer entry. You really want to be safe, take it below that wick of this candle right here, the low. Then you took out the whole structure that's there and look at where we came back and retested. It's exactly Ooh, let's turn this thing uh, yellow and solid. And look at that. We touched it to the tick when we came back through that channel it retested that exact low across there. So if you took that entry of taking it out of there, you didn't go one tick negative. That was a, a zero, zero negative trade uh, taken off out of there and then race down to the bottom. It's out of there. Now turn on roller coaster. Let's see if we had, had a move right up there. Not a whole bunch on there nice one off the center channel line what part of uh wyoming ryan that uh i ran the clayton home store in cheyenne i know uh i know that whole at laramie uh oh casper i can't tell you how many times yeah yeah Cat, I've, I've been up there it's uh god's country for sure there ain't nothing up there people always ask me uh they're, they're like, what happened to the trees? And I'm like, everybody burnt all of them to stay warm. And when they ran out of trees, they left Wyoming. <laughs> but, uh, so nice roller coaster move. Uh, I was going to say up in there. You want to get, um, you want to stay in the groove. So let's go down. Uh, we're going to take, all right, let's take off the, open up your object tree over here in the bottom right. We're going to go over here and take off all of the uh, regression trends. I'm going to take off that horizontal line, and that's all I got on that chart. So let's go back let go over there. Let me turn off the indicators, and we just got a naked chart. Okay, and then, do, and then you click this box here, it makes it bigger. Just that window, same way with down here, if you wanted to look at stochastics. 
uh, click on on and off, but I'm going to click this one on. And let's go down to a 15 minute. And we're going to see what's going, going on here. I am going, let's see, that's 2100. That's a long time frame from here to here. I like to, like, for instance, if you come in and it's, um, let's see, the open. Here's the Globex open for me, 1,700 hours. So, you know, 1,700. Let me just draw a channel from 1,700 to whatever time the market opens. 8.30 my time. All right. There's what the market did on a 15 minute channel. You tell me, does that look like that's pretty damn accurate? All right. Um, and then of course, 8.30, 9 o'clock, 9.30, 9 9.15, 9.30. Took off like a rocket out of there. And that's, I wanna know if we're in the groove. So let's turn on bits real quick. Now we're on 15 minutes. Let's go to five and let our channel get on there. And then this is for a lot of people that are not trading full time. You only have 30 minutes to trade or uh, 45 minutes, you know, before you go to work or you're at work and you don't want to get caught by your boss, but you're trading on the side. You know, uh, you don't have time to sit there and watch all day long for the big moves. So you need to find moves that are happening uh, w inside the channel. So 1,700 hours is central time is the open here, five o'clock. And then, you know, 8.30. So what did the market do between the open and the open, you know, and where's it at? And then just pick the tops and bottoms, you know what I mean? Depending on, like, it's just been range bound that, uh, I mean, I'm not saying you automatically, but it's like, we hit the bottom, where's it gonna go? It goes up, it hit the center. Well, it's either gonna go down or, or resistance come back down or it's gonna go up. What well, retested it twice, came back down. Retested it again and then it busted through finally. And then we went clear through, retested, clear through. There's so many opportunities. Here's one right here. There's one right there to go long. There's one to go short. There's one, there's one to go short. We didn't cross over. We just touched it, retested it. One to go short again. Comes back up. Use your channel uh, knowledge, go long on the channel line. Bits gets you back in again and takes you to center channel line. Well, you see wick, 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 wick. Can't get, you can't get one to close above. I'm probably gonna get out. You know what I mean? It's probably gonna reverse. Now it did go up there and then come right back down. Wick, wick, what are wicks? Wicks are big banks and institutions pushing the market back in the direction they want to go to. And we went clear to the other side. Wick, wick, where'd it go? Back down, same way over here. This one here, big old, this was big banks pushing it back up. Sellers came back in again. Banks won again, uh, uh, buyers pushed it back. Sellers came down one last time and then the buyers took over and they ruled the roost the rest of the day. But if you don't have a channel on your chart, you have no freaking idea what the hell's going on. I mean, look at, look at that. How are you supposed to like, I mean, how do you even remotely know what the hell you're gonna do without a channel. I, I just, I don't know how anybody, I don't know how I traded without a channel before I started using it uh, on there. But let's go down to two minutes. And we have our 15 minute channel. And then we have lots of opportunities in there on bits, but let's turn on roller coaster and see if we have any moves in here from tops to bottoms. Two minutes is not bad. You had one here, one there, one there. That one never hit. That one, uh, I mean, it hit there, hit there, hit there. I, I mean, that's one, two, three, four in a row. This one hit small, but wouldn't have taken it, went out. This one hit, this one hit, this one hit. 
that was a very small one before it took off. And if it doesn't tell you that the market dynamics are so jacked up right now, like there's no reason why the market should be going up, but it's going up and look at roller coasters, not finding its normal moves going up because the dynamics that it measures are not, they're not lining up on over. Let's go to a three minute and see what, all right, three minute, three minutes about the same. They had a nice one there. Let's go to four. All right, we had all right, four minutes. All right, see how it's not, you're producing one, two, three, four, five, six shorts in that whole thing, and it only popped off two longs. One right there and one right there. Both basically, I wouldn't say this one failed, but it, it's not a lot. This one uh, hit the center channel line and pulled back. But go back, and look at the previous ones. Great one, great one, uh, one that never hit, good one, small one, damn good one there, good one there. You kind of, you just got to go back on your time frame and see what they're doing. Four minutes, let's go to five and five minutes. Roller coaster's not popping off a lot. So guess what? Turn it off. Go to your, uh, that's why these things work in tandem together or try whatever you want to call it uh, together. If roller coaster is not popping them off, then turn it off or put it on another chart. And bits is super freaking accurate, like really freaking accurate on this chart, on any chart. It'll tell you what's going on. Then you tie it in down here with adding, um, uh, Stochastics, you add in, uh, the oscillator, add an RSI on there. It gets, gives you a really good picture of what's going on. Bits is going to get you in uh, crossing over. You just got to find the time frames. Go back before you just turn it on and say, all right, I'm going to take this bits trade here. Go back and look at the previous ones. All right. You had a really good one right here. All right. In a way, you kind of had some chop right here. Had a nice one there. If you don't have a channel line, you have no idea whether or not, um, like for instance, uh, these right here, this chop right here. I My personal rules, I don't like taking nothing on a center channel line. Yeah, you won't see me jack with the center channel line. I want the tops or the bottoms. And why? Look. 100% good trade, 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 100% good trade. Now, what happened once we got outside of that channel? We started a new channel. It's on it's on its own uh, its own dynamic now, but on this time frame here you're you if you only took them from the tops and bottoms you were good now you use your bits to get you in at the right moments to for a safer trade now look you're uh, taking it off that channel line you know when we come down you're probably gonna run out of juice when you're on here so you're gonna take profits if you were in this trade you come back up cross over we come back down you know it's probably gonna stop at the bottom of that channel and it did you know we're gonna get some resistance in the middle comes back down it's like just see where you're at on that trade that I like 15 minutes, draw that channel on there and then drop down to that five minutes that I, I like five minutes. Uh, I will tell you on gold, uh, I'm having really good luck on a four minute on gold. Let's go over to gold, 739, let's go over to gold. All right. So I'm not even going to go on the daily. Uh, I'm just going to go straight to, let's turn off bits. And let me turn that one off. Let's go to 15 minutes. And do, 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 do. let's go to 17. Where are we at? 1700 
this one right here and go to 8.30, wherever the hell it's at. Do, 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 do. All right, so what do we do overnight? That Let's make this bigger. All right, so the trend was down from the open yesterday till the open today. Trend was down. But by got at 8.30, we only spent a few dollars in here, or not in that, uh, 30 cent, uh, three ticks, and that was it. Gold never turned his, it just turned around, took off like a freaking rocket the rest of the day that's on there. But inside of this channel, 15 minute channel, let's turn on bits. And bits got you in. If you do your channel book, took your trade from the bottom. So you would have been in at 1914. If you didn't take that, you took it when it crossed back through and retested the center channel line. 1920, so you're $6, $6 ahead getting in down here. 1920, right there. If that didn't get you when he got outside of the channel line, uh, Cyan crossed over there and then never looked back. Uh, and I know from trading this earlier that this is a roller coaster move from up here on 15 minutes. But if you drop down to a five minute, five minute took it at the channel top line and let you know that you needed to go long. That, and it took this nice short all the way down to the bottom, took this one from the center channel line to the top, took this one from center channel line, not quite to the bottom because we didn't bottom down there, but it still gave you a good trade. So this is a very good example of Look at what it showed on ES. None of that looked right on ES. You know what I mean? There wasn't one roller coaster move um, that was really worth a crap on ES. Well, guess what? Yes, I mean, it took off uh, later in the day, but the numbers didn't line up. Here, it did, like big time uh, on here. Let me go to the four minute. Get my channel back on there. See, not as much on the four on this one. Let's go down to two. I've been having good luck with the four minute on um, bits. It's been very, very accurate on there. So two minute, two minutes been all right. That, uh, that five minute is the best range. So when you drop that channel, the first thing you're gonna look is, all right, how, how many times has it been right? So 8, 7.30, 8 in the morning, you drop this channel. All right, it was hellacious right on this one. Damn good on this one. An all right one if you had your stop loss in there. So we're going to say one maybe, two yeses, three yeses, four yeses, five yeses, uh, never hit, six yeses. Uh, this one never hit. So looking back, you have one, one eh, that's a small one and six uh, good ones. Well, when this one pops off and you know, if you didn't have your channel on there, you would have no idea if this was going into no man's land or not, and it did. So now add in, or uh, let's add in L8 wave actually. There is your, let's put this real big, real quick here. There's your six, four moving average and we were above it. So cyan crossed over right here. So grading your trade, cyan crossed over yellow going up. One reason to go long, purple point of control dots right here. We were above that, two reasons to go long. We crossed over the center channel line, three reasons to go long. We were above the six, four moving average, the blue line there four reasons to go long. Then let's go down here where we crossed over. You got your first, you'd been red forever and you got your first yellow bias dot signaling that change is happening in sign crossover. Five reasons to go long. Your oscillator has been getting smaller, 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 smaller. Six reasons to go long. You got your stochastic cross uh, or your arrow to go long, the candle before, seven reasons to go long. And then if you zoom in, we also went to the 20% of the stochastic uh, 
bounced off there, bounced off, and the blue crossed over at the bottom of that channel. Eight reasons to go long. So you have eight reasons to go long, zero not to. If you look at your, if you look at your RSI, uh, right at that cross also, we had crossed over down here, like at the pivot, uh, down over here, we crossed over, I think that's 30, I think that's, is that 80? Yeah, 70, 30. We went over the 30 on there. So, I mean, you've got nine, 10 reasons to take this long down here. Um, and then between down here and right here, you got nine, 10 reasons to go long and zero to not to. And look what it did. That uh, it's a very good day. All right, guys, what? Uh, Kathy, it is, let me put it in the chat box just so you guys can have it. You know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to take a screenshot of this book. And then that way I can just post it in the link. Price action breakdown. It's like uh, six bucks or 10 bucks on Apple Books or Amazon, I believe. Uh, I got it on my Apple Books. Um, I love it on my iPad because I can take notes and then print those notes off from the book um, and staple them. And then I basically have my own personal Cliff Notes version of whatever I read. That's on there. All right. What, um, what do you all want to take a look at? That, uh, da, 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 Sheridan. Trevor, I have my uh, workspace separate uh, that has a bunch of different stuff on it, so I'm not going to dig into that one. Uh, I've got, I've got a ton. There's, I've got so many workspaces you don't even. Uh, I'm constantly testing new stuff, uh, so you'll see some things on one chart and not on another. Uh, but that, follow these rules. And you're like, you will uh, have better chances. I mean, how, think of this, Trevor. If you follow this, if you follow what I just told you, did any of these not work out? No. All right. And I'm not some mathematician genius. Just drop a channel, see where you're at in the channel. It, uh, you know what I mean? Drop it from the open until the open. How did we stay inside the channel? Did we have any goofy stuff that went on? Um, I don't know. Here, let's look at, let's just go in the past. Let's go 15 minutes. Actually, here, let's just go, let's just pick something. I don't trade oil. I don't know. I don't really trade oil anymore because it's, oil has been some of the greatest winners I've had and the biggest losers I've ever had. So I don't really jack with oil. Unless a rocket goes off somewhere in the world, blowing up a refinery or something to do with oil production, I don't look at oil. Uh, so let's do a channel from 1700 to 830. I'm just guessing this big, yep. All right. All right. Eh. Not bad, but look how much, look how it respected this channel for several days. Actually, hell, the hell we're into three days. It's pretty much stayed inside that channel that um, stayed on top of it. But um, you can see how it didn't really have highs and lows. It just do, 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 going around. You don't want to mess with that. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, look for your best opportunities. And it's, I mean, was there a trade right there? Yes, there was um, out of there. And that was a good one on the 15 minutes um, coming out of there. Go down to five minutes. Let's go backwards. When I have a uh, Zoom running and that, it taxes the hell out of my video card. Um, I can hear it running over there right now. Um, but you have, I mean, you, that's actually a good oil trade right there at uh, 42.57 and went to, uh, it went a dollar up, 100 ticks, $1,000. Is that a 1,000? Yeah. 
thousand dollar trade is not bad for one. Um, let's turn on roller coaster. See what it's got in there. Uh, five minutes. Had a nice one. Look at that one off the center uh, bottom channel line. That's really good. Let's go down to four. Four's not bad. Actually, got some good ones on there. I just, uh, oil's just not in the groove for me to jack whip on it. Let's go to NQ. All right, NQ, take off roller coaster, take off bits, and let's just do a quick, uh, let's, all right, I'm going to do this one here, as in you just turned on your computer in the morning, and you've got 30 minutes to trade before you go to work. All right, so let's go today. Let's go 15 minutes on NQ. I didn't trade NQ today, but it was one of the winners today, so I, I probably should have. We're gonna go channel, and we're gonna go from 1700 to 830. Okay, slightly up from yesterday's open till today's open. We're gonna drop down to a five minute. We'll go backwards, zoom in. All you gotta do is hit this reset button and it will zoom in for you. Then turn on bits and look for opportunities in there. And there's, there's that chop, just like an ES earlier. That man, and that was just a constant little chop, 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 chop. All right, having this channel lets you know where you're going to be at that on, on there. We know we're at the bottom right here, all right? And we saw a lot of indecision right here. We had green, 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 green. Even Look at this. Even when it was going down, it didn't start uh, turning yellow. It, we went down once and never saw one uh, red or yellow indecision. It was still up, 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 boom had one pull back there, got some indecision, got a nice little crown, and then it came out and went. Now grading, same way with this one. I mean, this was um, same as ES, gold, uh, or, which is crazy. Gold went up and NASDAQ went up and ES went up. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but cyan crossed over your yellow line right there. One reason to go long. Above the purple point of control dots, two reasons to go long. We came off this bottom channel line. One, two, three, four, five, six candles could not close below that bottom channel. Three reasons to go long. Look down below, your RSI popped off the 30%, uh, percent, tested it, came back over, retested it. And where did it retest? The last candle before it took off. Four reasons to go long. Then your in now, once you take your green candle, uh, where cyan crossed over the next one, you had a green dot before cyan actually crossed over. So you have five reasons to go long. You got your um, stochastics crossed over 20. Or, yeah, 20. And the blue line crossed over. So you went below 20, came above it, retested it, and then crossed over. Six reasons to go long because we went 30 over the 20. Blue line crossed over. Seven reasons to go long. Got your breakout arrow there. Eight reasons to go. Look for a reason to go long. Have you heard one reason not to take this trade? No. Now let's go over. Uh, let's go over here and this one here of grading one. You didn't have a crossover, so it's like uh, you're. Uh, I mean, could you got lucky? Sure, but I'm looking for tops and bottoms. I mean, if you're struggling trying to find a profitable trade, just look for the tops and bottoms. Don't jack with this center line at all. Like zero, zilch, none ya. Don't do anything with it. Let's go to um, six, four moving average. I turn on Elliott wave, let's see what. When Cyan crossed over, you were also above the six, four moving average. And if I zoom in here, if you can see this, look where that candle came back and retested it almost to the tick. It was one tick away from uh, touching that 6.4 moving average line and took back off. So, I mean, there now you have your ninth or 10th reason to go long um, out of there. 
and then the fifth wave move on this today. Now I didn't isolate this chart, it's running off something else, but I assure you, if I click this chart, let me see here. I bet you if I draw a, let me turn off if it's in a light wave. I bet you if I draw a one hour channel from the pivot, what do you want to bet that fifth wave target was the very top of that? I'm going to go from here to here because this all is staying in the same line. So we're going to do it and let's just do a white channel so it's easy to tell the difference. So I'm going to go from that pivot low to where we're at there. And then we're going to go back down to five minutes. And then we're going to click back on Elliott Wave and see where that was. Go back here. You have to scroll back sometimes to get it. All right, so that yellow channel we drew actually had, now I would never take a fifth wave move that went this far sideways for that long. I, I thought in my personal experience, nine out of 10 times this will fail. Now it hit, came back down, did its thing, great. And I'm just telling you right now, I, I won't, if it's not seven to 10 candles and then pulls out and goes, I'm not taking it. This is chop, 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 then hit its target and came down. Uh, now take that out and you can play the tops and bottoms of that add your bits back in and you can take that even on that pullback there there's another bits long right there take it or not and your uh, bias dots are green you came down and retested the top of that channel basically and then took back off again that on it and say stochastics crossed over your 20 down there, went back there. You got your breakout arrow to go. Your oscillator went smaller, 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 boom. Uh, I mean, you have every reason to take that trade too. And I I am 99% sure if I turn on Elliott Wave, your 6.4 moving average, yep. Your 6.4 moving average, you were above it when it crossed over. So you have, you have, all, you have your nine, 10 reasons to take that trade also on it. If you don't have seven, eight reasons to take the trade, then don't take it. No, Edith, I do not isolate on a daily and then drop down because you can't. And uh, let me show you why. Uh, let's see here. If I went to a daily, you can't isolate um, the count on, let me, let me shut off the, or delete these. Make sure I don't have anything else. My old eyes, guys, my old eyes. Uh, you can't isolate on it. To isolate on a daily, you would have to take the pivot, which would be right here. All right, so if I took that, uh, hovering over there, candle count number is 5252. All right, so if I hit that sprocket, 5252, it's going to give me, and there should be an Elliott wave in here, if I recall, right? Two of them, boom, boom. And this one hit, and then the third wave is turned into a longer fifth wave. And I get, a, I would bet if I hover this down, it says we've hit a fifth wave target. Now it has not moved the three up here yet. So we'll probably have some pullback uh, before it goes up again. That, uh, but so now if I drop down to a one hour, that wave count is going to be jacked up because we need to go to yesterday's higher low. All right. So if I'm on an hour, 826, 825, there's 24. So I need to, let me zoom in a little bit. You on an hour time frame, you would need to isolate somewhere about right here. 
all right? But that candle is 11,787, all right? So if I go over here and change it, whoop. wait, wait, let me turn off it so it's easier to see. 11,787. If I can click fast enough, 11,787. 11, and there you go. Now see, look, it's totally different because I isolated off the correct candle. Now we have, all right, according to this, on the NASDAQ, on a one hour chart, we have a third wave move with a fourth wave pullback possible. I don't know what will happen. Me personally, I don't like taking, uh, I'm a short term trader. I'm in and out, boom, boom. Uh, I don't carry stuff overnight or weeks or whatever. You saw with that daily chart, somebody that has uh, a lot of money sitting, you know what I mean? Where you're playing the, the long game, um, you would use those bigger charts like that. But if, if you're trading for income, you can't trade off a daily chart. Um, that's on there. So let's drop down now to that 15 minute chart. Now it's 15, it's going isolated off that candle that I just gave you, but that's not where you need to isolate from. So we go to the 25th, which is down over here. So you need to isolate off this candle, which is 21,050 which is totally different than the 11,000. So 21,050. Come back on and there you go. Now you have a fifth wave move that uh, on your 15 minute chart. So, and this what now look at this one. This is what a nice fifth wave move is. Hit your fourth, pulls back in, comes back out. Uh, no, Edith, you only you have to isolate on whatever time frame you're on. So what I was showing you is that where you're isolating, you need to, if you isolate, you need to stay on that chart to trade. Because if you if you isolate on a 15 minute chart and then trade change over to a five minute chart, your isolation is not going to be correct because you isolated on a 15 minute and then now you're on a five. So you have to re-isolate on the five. Uh, Tom, yes and no. I'm not uh, a big support and resistance person. Uh, my buddy John is, um, and he helps me on that uh, part of it. But I honestly don't pay attention to him. I mean, you know what my, this is what my support and resistance is. I go over on a one hour chart. I go over here to the left. I want to see what's to the left of me. And I don't see anything for a hundred million years that uh, for for this. So let's go to 240, and I look to the left. There's, well, oh wait, there's nothing now because we're at all-time highs. Duh, we're on Nasdaq. So over here, let's go back down to the hour. You can tell I don't trade the Nasdaq. I was like, didn't even realize where we were at. Uh, NASDAQ just moves too fast for me. Um, if you're on the right side of it, it's great. If you're on the wrong side of it, it'll eat your ass in a heartbeat. Um, so here's a one hour chart. So if we're coming up, uh, I know we're gonna get some resistance somewhere, like this right here, rally base drop, okay? I know I'm gonna get some, uh, some resistance in here, which we did, but it was only one candle. Drop down and took off. So I'm not looking at, shorting the market right there. I'm going to be riding this, um, let's put on bits and see it. Cyan crossed over right here and that this move just kept on going. What, let me see what time that is. You hit it at 820 at 11 o'clock. So let's go to a 15 minute. 820. 
So here is, I'm down on a 15 minute chart. Too many candles for a supply zone, uh, but we know on that higher time frame uh, that we're gonna get some resistance in there. And we did, I mean, we had a little pullback. I mean, 421 to 393. I mean, I guess it was 50 points, 40 points, 50 points. But if you were over here taking this long right here, this didn't matter to you. It just kept on going. Uh, and I would, I mean, look at it. You had your pullback, yellow of indecision, red for short, got your first green long, and your green long was going, cyan crossed over, your stochastics went down below 20, came back above 20, crossed the red, got your breakout arrow, uh, oscillator's good, you never even seen any red, it stayed green and going, and then I would... I'm gonna guess that that's a roller coaster move. No, nope. it actually had a roller coaster move down. Um, I thought you'd have a, a good breakout one there. You'd had a nice uh, move down, but uh, yep. So, but I mean that's a hellacious nice move there. That uh, going up. You just gotta grade. Uh, get it in the habit in your brain to grade the trade. You don't got six, seven, eight. I mean on these. You want eight, nine reasons to go long. If you're, well, I wouldn't say start dialing it back. Stick with eight, nine reasons to go long. If you don't have eight, nine reasons to go long, don't take the, or short, don't take the trade. All right. One trade, one hour, five minutes, seven, ice time. Yes, Edith. If, like, if you open up uh, another workspace in TradingView or uh, whatever you're trading with, you can just name that one uh, five minutes or name it 15 minutes. And then um, that way that workspace is always isolated off the last one that you isolated. So if you, um, you know, you're flipping around, looking at whatever uh, different um, workspaces, everything that's on that one workspace is five minutes and isolated off of it. So every time you look back at it and you pull up the five minute chart, your isolation is correct on all of those. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, guys. It's a little after eight. I guess we went a little late. Hopefully, I didn't bore you guys to death. Um, did this help you guys? I mean, I, I know I say it every week, and I sound like a broken record, but you wouldn't believe how many people call me during the week, and they're like, I, I need help. And I'm like, I'm like, just go to Wednesday. They're like, what do I do? I'm like, go watch the replay of last week's webinar. Like, everything you need to do is right there just if you don't have nine or ten reasons to go long or short don't take the trade and and don't go off gut feelings because all of a sudden you look at the chart and it goes dur, dur. don't jump on don't try to would you try jumping on a speeding train in real life no so why in the hell in trading would you jump on a train too all right bill thank you so much i i hope so gary thank you too Gary, I never got to call you. I sent you like two texts that I was going to do it. I keep forgetting. I have like a million different things that pop up. Edith, good. I, I'm glad it helps. Um, I appreciate all you guys uh, taking your time to hang out with me for an hour. So, all right, you guys all have a good night. Talk to you later.